I believe I, our government has been fair over the years in how we treat media. It's my personal experience. And in order for any democracy to thrive and prosper, we need to respect your role, the role of the media. Because after all, they are the fourth, you are the fourth pillar of, of governance in any democracy. And your role in keeping public officials in line and be responsible, be accountable for their actions while in office is very important. And in my many years in politics, I've had a love and hate relationship with, with the media. Because one day they embrace me, and the second day when I'm out of line, they write it as it is. The only thing is my picture, my photo, and the article will be now be promoted to the first front page. You have to have that fixed skin. But you have to understand each other's role, the role of government, and we have to respect each other's role. Because there is no such thing as total freedom. We all have a set of conduct in any profession. We all have sets of rules and regulations that we must respect and follow. Then all is good. And I believe the main threat to your profession now is fake news. It's something that is good that you are going to address today. Because the problem is people, the majority of readers, they like reading fake news. And that is the main threat that, that we need. And I'm happy that uh, you are, and I encourage your profession and your organization to work together with government to see how we can put in place proper measures and controls to prevent this sort of unsubstantiated or unfounded news and uh, personal attacks on governments and government officials at large. So I wish you all the best for today's discussions. As we had a, uh, a chat with Rudy the other day uh, when he attacked the government for reintroducing the criminal, criminal libel act. I believe I support the government on that because when we abolish the law, we had to because the formal media is already it's already conducting in a way according to the regulations and you are very professional in your work. But when the social media started to come out and all this fake news, the government must do something to try and put control. But it's not going to be there forever. I think once we put in place measures and controls and regulations, proper regulations. So the way forward should be all good for everybody. And you'll be happy, government has is happy, and most of all we praise God every day in our lives. And we all we all are happy. Thank you very much for your time and be have a fruitful discussion today. Message of UNESCO's Director General, Ms. Audrey Azule. And I begin. Our liberty depends on the freedom of the press that cannot be limited without being lost. These words written by Thomas Jefferson in 1786, when he was fighting for the independence of his country, have a universal scope that transcend the historical moment of the foundation of the United States of America. Any state under the rule of law that respects individual freedoms and particularly the freedom of opinion, conscience, and expression relies on a free, independent press that is safe from censorship or coercion. The ideal of a state under the rule of law calls for well-informed <coughs> citizens, transparent political decisions, public debates on topics of common interest, and a plural, plural apologies, plula, plural, plurality of viewpoints that shape opinions and undermine official truths and dogmatism. This shaping and informative power mainly falls to the press and the media in general under all their guises and through various mediums. UNESCO is actively involved in defending freedom of expression which is at the core of its mandate, and today celebrates the 25th World Press Freedom Day. The theme chosen for this year is an open invitation to think of the relations between the media, justice, and the rule of law. 
And this is why I brought the example of reporting on sexual crimes before you. It is also an opportunity to examine the new challenges regarding the freedom of online press. Freedom of press, like any other freedom, is never completely secure. The development of a knowledge and information-based society via digital channels implies heightened vigilance to ensure the essential criteria of transparency, free access, and quality. Quality information requires working to check sources and select pertinent subjects. It calls for ethics and an independence of mind. It thus depends entirely on the work of the journalists. The World Press Freedom Day is also an opportunity to highlight the crucial role played by this profession in defending and preserving the democratic rule of law. In 2017, 79 journalists were assassinated worldwide in the exercise of their profession. We are glad that Samoa is not one of them. UNESCO is committed to defending the safety of journalists and fighting against impunity for crimes committed against the journalists. It also contributes to their training and helps the authorities in different countries to adapt their laws on freedom of expression to international standards. On the occasion of this year's World Press Freedom Day, UNESCO is organizing an international conference for the defense of freedom of press to be held in Ghana, during which UNESCO Guillermo Cano World Press Freedom Prize will be awarded. The prize bears the name of the Colombian journalist assassinated in 1986 for bravely denouncing the power of the drug trafficking cartels. Today, we invite you to celebrate the freedom of press and the work carried out by the journalists and to participate in the online campaign around the hashtags World Press Freedom Day and Press Freedom. With this, I conclude the UNESCO message on the World Press Freedom Day. To commemorate World Press Freedom Day in Samoa this year, JAWS, in partnership with UNESCO, has organized a national forum on freedom of expression online on the theme, looking over internet risks and challenges. The nature of the in internet is a benefit to freedom of expression and access to information, but it does have its challenges. The negative side of the internet is the openness to transmit hate speech, deliberate, tra deliberate defamation, sharing and leaking personal information, and the spread of fake news. These risks cannot be effectively monitored if there is a lack and under-resourcing of self-regulatory self -regulatory systems. Elsewhere, it has fueled the growth of legislation and regulation imposing restrictions on the freedom of the press. The National Forum on Freedom of Expression Online looks over online risks and challenges to create for the media and relevant stakeholders to talk about these challenges. The challenges include freedom of the media online, safety of journalists, the role of stakeholders to address these challenges. Today, we have brought together the best of the best, the most qualified stakeholders to discuss this theme and to develop strategies to address these themes, especially in social media. So if you are here and you're invited, you are the best of the best. And at the conclusion of this forum, we hope to come up with the incel strategy as a pathway to starting to address these issues. So we are not just Samoa, we will be there. On this note, this is the end of my speech. On this note, I'd like to thank all the panelists for accepting our invitation to be part of this very important forum. I would also like to thank UNESCO for the continuous support and assistance provided for uh, World Press Freedom Day every year. To the Reverend Letupu, the Honorable Associate Minister, Director of UNESCO, members of the Media Council, the media, distinguished guests, thank you very much for gracing us with your presence. 
and celebrating with us World Press Freedom Day 2018. To conclude, I wish everyone a happy and productive World Press Freedom Day. Thank you.